All right. Good evening, everyone. As you get into this Zoom, we are excited to be able to welcome you on this Wednesday evening. We're just going to give it a few minutes while everybody gets their Zoom logged in and settled right into this Zoom all about Pathways to the Navy, which will be really exciting. We've got a great attendance so far. It's exciting to see so many people logging in to watch. And we're just going to give it another minute or two while everybody gets their Zoom up and running this evening. Well, welcome. Welcome, everyone, to Pathways to the Navy. We've got a great collection of students here that are all part of our NROTC unit here at Maine Maritime Academy. And they're going to be sharing their experiences and some tips and tricks and um, the greatest things that you need to know if this is something that you see yourself doing or know somebody that wants to go in this pathway um, or just want some more information. This is what this evening's all about. It's really about you guys getting what you want. Um, so what we're going to do is um, encourage you to ask questions and engage with this conversation. And so we are in the webinar format. We can't see you. And we can't hear you, but we do want you to be part of the conversation. So please use the chat function and please use the Q&A function um, that you see at the bottom of your screen. And I'm just going to make sure that everyone um, can uh, utilize those functionalities. And so if you have a question, please pose it to our panelists here, and we will get to as many questions as we possibly can this evening. And uh, there have been a few pre-submitted questions, which um, we will be hopefully answering throughout the thread of the conversation. And so welcome again to Pathways to the Navy. So my name is Kate, and I'm the Director of Admissions here at Maine Maritime Academy, and I'm joined by a great collection of students that are part of the NROTC unit. I'm going to pass it over to them to introduce themselves, uh, who they are, where they're from, what they're studying, why they're here, um, give the full rundown before we dive into any uh, big questions that you guys might have. So Scott, I'm going to pass it to you first to kick it off. All right. Thank you, Kate. Uh... So my name is Scott McClellan. I am a junior here at Maine Maritime Academy in the five-year Marine Systems Engineering Program, which means I am a member of the Regiment of Midshipmen, where I will obtain my unlimited tonnage third assistant engineer's license upon graduation. Um, on top of that, I am also a member of the Navy ROTC unit here. I came in on a four-year national scholarship. Um, so my college is entirely paid for by the Navy and I am uh, paying them back with five years of active duty service upon graduation and commissioning. Awesome, well, thank you, Scott. We're gonna dive into a little bit more of all these details here in a little bit, but I'm gonna pass it to Jacob to introduce yourself. Hi, uh, so my name is Jacob Hinnermeyer. I'm from Macon, Georgia, and I'm a freshman here. I'm studying international business and logistics right now, and part of the lacrosse team, and I'm also a Marine option in the NROTC program. So that's what's really exciting um, is that we have the Naval and the Marine option. So definitely throw questions out at Jacob if you have any interest in that Marine side of things. Wesley, I'm gonna go to you next. Good evening, everyone. My name is Wesley Brewer and I'm a senior at Maine Maritime Academy. I'm studying international business and logistics, and I'm a Navy option. And because I'm a senior, I've already been able to pick the community and the Navy I'm going to enter into. So I'm going to be a surface warfare officer, which means I'm going to be on, uh, I'd like to be on cruisers or destroyers and be stationed uh, hopefully in Europe somewhere. Uh, and additionally, uh, the Navy unit here has, of course, uh, active duty staff members, some members of the, the Navy that help run the unit, but additionally, we have a midshipman staff, and currently I have the privilege to be the commanding officer of the midshipman side. So that's been an awesome leadership experience, and it's definitely been a lot of, a lot of fun. Yeah, which is um, really fun because Wesley actually approached me about putting this panel on, so he's really um, put this together, which is exciting for all of you, and, and we chose this because there has been so many questions about the NROTC program here, so I'm glad, um, and thank you, Wesley, for doing that. Julia, why don't you take it over? Hi guys, my name is Julia Malcolm. I'm a senior at Maine Maritime Academy. I am a uh, senior in the Marine Engineering Technology major. 
and I am a midshipman in the SSMP program or the Strategic Sea Lift Midshipman program. And so I hopefully will be commissioning as a reserve officer. I will sail on my license for three years and then have a uh, total requirement of eight years. And in that time, I will complete at least two, week, uh, two weeks of active duty training um, every fiscal year. So that I'm glad you mentioned that, Julia, because that strategic city of midshipman program is really unique to the maritime schools. And we're going to dive into that a little bit um, more as we go. But those students will be graduating as officers in the Navy in the reservist capacity, but they do have to be maintaining their U.S. Coast Guard unlimited license and obviously be here in a program that has them receive that license. So. Um, well, what I'm going to do is pose the first question to all of you um, in our group and ask, what was it that that led you down the path of deciding that going into the pathway that leads into the Navy, because um, there's so many branches out there, what was it that you chose specifically about the Navy and what chose you specifically about wanting to serve your country? So, um, Julie, I'm going to throw it to you first, actually, uh, because I think you kind of came to this in, in a roundabout way a little bit later. So I actually just joined the unit last semester. So I'm pretty late uh, in my journey, I guess at Maine Maritime, but I've always looked at the program here um, and I've always respected the midshipmen that have participated in it. And, you know, I, I never thought that I could do it. Um, I kind of just, you know, I was like, oh God, they have to do PT and they, they need to do like all these, they're like crazy jacked and stuff like that. But I mean, it's, it's a really great family and a really amazing community. And so I joined because I was lucky enough to go to a leadership conference at Annapolis at the United States Naval Academy. And I was just going there as a member of the regiment of midshipmen, um, not in a ROTC capacity, but I was introduced to this amazing community of people who were from all over the country, who were dedicated, uh, wanting to serve their country. And I, I just was so um, amazed and it was really empowering to join and find this new family that supported me and shared the same values that I had. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing that. That is um, a really great way of expressing that, that family, right? That supportive family. Jacob, I'm gonna to turn to you because you're kind of one of the newer members as well in the, in the unit. Yeah, so uh, like I said, I'm a freshman. And so I got the uh, four-year scholarship for the Marine side. So I had to apply for that my senior year, but ever since I've been a kid, uh, I've always wanted to serve in the military. Uh, I've had family who's served pretty much in all branches in the military. So I've been exposed to all kinds of Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, and, you know, just pretty much ever since middle school, I've wanted to be in the Marine Corps and thought about enlisting at first, but learned about the ROTC program and how you can become an officer through it. And it's a really fulfilling career. And so I applied for the scholarship my senior year and got it. And so now I'm here uh, pursuing that dream. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Wesley, I'm gonna to go to you next. So as, as far as my, my journey went, I knew I wanted to be in the military. And for a long time, I was thinking about being in the Navy or the Coast Guard. And eventually I decided that I wanted to join the Navy. And I actually took a gap year. So I didn't uh, go to go to college my first uh, year after high school. And that was a really big learning experience. And I was, I'm very glad that I did that. And so I really was able to explore a lot of different college options. And I was looking at the service academies and I almost got into one of the federal service academies. And that would be a really awesome program, but I really found a niche here that worked well for me at Maine Maritime because I personally love the fact that we've got uh, just under 40 people in the unit. And we've got, as Julia said earlier, a really strong uh, brotherhood between everybody. And it's really a great opportunity to get to know and get some one-on-one -on -one mentorship with some really great uh, midshipmen and then also members of our active duty staff. So it, it kind of worked out. I didn't have a 
you know, this big game plan of what I wanted to do, but <clears throat> I ended up here and this was uh, definitely a blessing that I was able to, to be here and I'm going to commission soon. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. It is exciting. And to be part of that smaller unit is probably um, a, a reason that you guys are here watching because you're, you're a name and a personality and part of that family opposed to one of the many um, in some of the larger units. Scott, I'm going to turn to you. All right. Thank you. Um, so kind of the, the same situation as Wesley. Um, I always knew I wanted to serve and grew up fishing and being around the ocean a lot. So uh, for me, it was going to be the Navy or the Coast Guard. Um, I looked into applying to the Naval Academy and went uh, quite a ways into that process. Uh, however, I was unsuccessful, um, but I don't regret it any in any way, shape, or form. I am so happy that I ended up here, um, and I and I wouldn't want it any other way. Uh, being here is probably the the greatest thing that could have ever happened to me. Like Wesley said, having the smaller unit, uh, it's much more of a community and a family. Um, you really get to grow with everyone in your class, and and you you struggle together, you you succeed together, and it's really great to see in the bonds that you form because you're in such a small group, um, sharing all of these experiences together, um, not only inside the unit, but also outside the unit, just being at such a small school, um, just knowing that you have that core group of people that you can always turn to, um, that you know you can say hi to on your way to class, or um, that you may even have a class with that are always gonna be there to help you. Um, it's just been a really great experience for me. That's awesome. And I um, was noticing the composition of our, our panelists here, our students, and it wasn't intentional, but we have en <laughs> heavily in the engineer and the IBL programs, um, but do keep in mind that you can be in any of our other majors as well um, and part of the unit. So we're not, you don't have to just be a business student or, <laughs> or an engineer gaining your license. Um, there are other pathways uh, at our at main maritime in order to be a part of that unit. Um, so the next question I wanted to put out there was really talking about, and I don't know who the expert is in this panel, um, but one of the questions that came in was about the scholarship. And I just wanted to kind of talk about what the difference is between somebody that's here on scholarship. Can somebody join if they don't have the scholarship? Um, what do those pathways look like? And if you, um, as a prospective student, are looking at wanting to become an officer in the Navy and you didn't get that scholarship, what are some of the other ways in which you can be a part of this unit? Um, and so I don't know who's got the best <laughs> answer or who kind of understands that matrix the most. Jacob, do you want to talk about your experience? And this, this is something you just you just completed. Yeah, so I can talk about the scholarship side. So yeah, uh, you have to apply in your senior year, uh, normally by January, you have to submit your application. So it's similar to kind of the service academy route where there's an online application. So for the Marine side, it's a bit different, but there's an online application where you fill out your, it's practically a college application with a few essay questions. And then you will do an officer interview. So I met with a Marine recruiter uh, in my hometown and talk to him and kind of explained why I wanted to be in the Marines and some other questions they had for me about leadership and other things like that. And then uh, you took your physical fitness test uh, and had that put in your package. And so when you submit your package, it goes to a board for the Marines and it's against uh, everyone in the country and they pretty much rank you and they have a set amount of scholarships they give out every year. And from there, they either, uh, you either gain a scholarship or you don't, but either way you can still join the unit without a scholarship. Yeah, that's an important point. So you can gain, you can join the unit whether you have the scholarship or not. And so um, there are pathways for students in their sophomore and their junior year to pick up scholarships that um, other students were not able to continue through the entire progression so that it helps support the education, that cost of the education. 
if you did not get awarded that first time around. So don't feel like if you didn't get awarded that first time around, your chances um, are nil, right? You, you have many more chances to continue through that process and be a part of that unit and still commission as an officer and have an amazing career. So did it, um, Wesley or Scott, did you have anything to add um, to what Jacob had mentioned? No, that was a, that was a great answer. Um, like he said, basically, it's just like applying to another college. Um, but if you don't get it, that doesn't mean that you still cannot um, go to a unit and be part of what's called college program, um, where you're not on scholarship. And then, like you said, you can pick up a scholarship um, later on, either your sophomore or your junior year, um, based on your performance in the unit and um, receive financial compensation for school and, um, and then be commissioning as an officer. You do not have to pick up a scholarship, though to participate in the unit, but a lot of people do. And one thing that our unit's really good at is getting uh, a lot of the active duty midshipman scholarships. Yeah, so so there is a way for those of you that are watching um, to help support your education if that's one of the reasons that you're looking at this. But if that's the reason that you're looking at this, um, it's there are other opportunities to help support the education. You have to do this for the right reasons. Um, Julia, do you mind talking about the, some of the other differences between the strategic sea lift midshipman program that you're in and then the full um, students that are going out as active duty, if you don't mind? <laughs> um, so um, the, the biggest difference is obviously that um, we would commission as you know, a member of a restricted line community. So we would be serving in a reservist capacity, uh, whereas the kids that go active duty or are uh, on scholarship have to commission in the unrestricted line. So the uh, four communities, which I'm sure they can explain a little bit more, but that's uh, submarine warfare, surface warfare, aviation, and spec war uh, special warfare. So we would be just um, serving on the needs of the Navy um, as a reservist and then serving our active duty for two weeks every year um, minimum. Uh, we would be sailing on our US Coast Guard license. So that would be, you know, either in a civilian capacity working on like an oil tanker or something like that, or we could work for military seal of command. Um, and we can also uh, complete those orders and have a lot of flexibility with where we do our orders and what we're doing. Uh, because we, we kind of, we kind of, do our own thing we uh, on the needs of the navy we request certain things it's just it's we are reservists and we try and get our uh training due on time and that's two weeks every year and and one of the big reasons um and the, the main reason that our students have to be gaining that unlimited coast guard license is that if they were needed um in in a time of uh, emergency, um, they would be the ones as that knowledgeable basis on a seagoing ship. And so they need to have their, they maintain their license, sail on their license and um, have that time out at sea. And so that's why that program is reserved only for the students going to uh, schools, the, the maritime schools that are gaining that unlimited license. So um, you could be going active um, or going in that reservist capacity if you're gaining that unlimited license. So that's really kind of a nice option to think about because there's there's um, other opportunities out there than a traditional school that has an NROTC unit. Um, so there was a question that um, somebody pulled into the Q&A um, that we actually have a written answer for, but I wanted to um, bring it up verbally too. And it's talking about the scholarships. And I know we had just talked about the scholarship that you can gain at that national level um, to help support the education, but does MMA also have additional support? And we do, which is kind of nice for those that are gaining that full scholarship, that full four-year scholarship, Maine Maritime Academy picks up the room and board. And um, Wesley, I know that you um, have lived that for a while now. Do you want to speak to it? for a moment, because you had thrown in that answer, I think, yeah. Yeah, it's honestly, it's pretty awesome because 
with um, and somebody actually just typed this again into the, the question and answer box. But yes, the for your national scholarship that you receive, uh, uh, if you receive it to Maine Maritime, then you'll automatically get room and board paid for. And like I said, you'll get a thousand dollars for a room stipend uh, every year. So not every semester, but every year that you are off campus. So that's a really awesome opportunity. And again, I'm very blessed to be able to receive this. And it's it's definitely a big help. Um, and again, like one of the reasons why I was applying for the scholarship is I personally couldn't afford to go to school if I didn't have some kind of scholarship. And this was a great opportunity. And I've honestly really, really grown to love my major and I've had a lot of great opportunities uh, all because of that. Yeah. Scott, did you have anything to add or Jacob? Um, yeah, so another thing going off that with scholarships is Maine Maritime also offers other um, merit based scholarships that you can apply for. Um, and just because you are put on a national four year scholarship from the Navy, that does not hinder your ability to get any other merit based scholarships from Maine Maritime or um, any other organizations like if you have scholarships that you're applying for coming out of high school, you're still eligible to receive all of those. And um, those scholarships that you get can uh, can be used at school and cover some expenses that uh, the Navy scholarship doesn't cover. For example, I took scuba diving. Um, so that was one thing that I still didn't have to pay for because my other scholarships um, covered that. And whatever money I get from those scholarships that is not used for any extra expenses that I accrue during my time here um, is my money upon graduation. And I can get a refund check for the school from that. Yeah, those refund checks, <laughs> those are great, right? Um, but um, absolutely what Scott was saying in terms of those merit-based and we also have other endowed-based scholarships. So um, your opportunities to help support that education are, are there, which is really exciting. Um, can one of you explain what additional portions of your day are engaged with NROTC? Are there additional classes that you have to take because you're part of that program? Um, what does your day-to-day -day might look like that might be different than a traditional student, maybe a traditional student that's also in the regiment or just a traditional student that um, is not part of our regiment of midshipmen um, ordinarily? Anybody wanna start with that one? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll tackle that one. So I am a member of the regiment um, as well as being a part of the unit, um, but uh, being a part of the unit on top of being a part of the regiment uh, means that we will PT um, early in the morning, two days a week before muster. So we, uh, we get up and we PT uh, bright and early. We usually have a lot of fun, do a lot of fun stuff. Um, and then during your time as a midshipman, if you're going active duty Navy, you have to take eight um, extra courses outside of your academic plan, which allows you to obtain the Naval Science minor. Um, and then you also will take calculus one and two, as well as calculus-based physics one and two, um, which are only required for a few of our majors here, mainly the systems program. Um, so if you're in those, great, you were already taking them. Um, but if not, and you're a member of the unit going active duty, um, then you have to take calculus and physics um, on top of your regular academic load. And then, like I said, it's eight extra classes for the um, Naval Science minor, which usually works out to be about one a semester. Um, so you'll usually take a little more credits than the average student. Um, most students will take 16 to 18. Um, with being in the ROTC unit, you're looking more like 18 to 20, um, but it's very manageable and uh, everyone in the unit has has been there before so they know how to help you um and you know everyone makes it work and the registrar is really helpful with uh, course conflicts um because we have a lot of labs and um stuff like that and our rtc courses are offered on tuesdays and thursdays which is when our labs are um but uh at the end of the day you're always able to make it work and uh get done what you need to get done um, the only other extra thing that we have is there's also a leadership lab that we take every semester, which is also on Tuesday afternoons. Um, we do a lot of uh, general trainings during that, a lot of different briefs just to learn about uh, a lot of different stuff that's going on in the Navy, rules, regulations, courtesies, all that stuff like that. Um, 
and we'll do a lot of fun activities um, outside of class and outside the normal school week as well, especially now that COVID's finally gone, the unit is finally uh, ramped back up on a lot of the off-campus activities. Uh, we just had the Army-Navy football game up at the University of Maine with the um, other half of our unit, which is there at the University of Maine. And then we played against the Army unit there. So that's always a lot of fun. Um, so we get a lot of opportunities that uh, people who aren't in the unit don't necessarily get. Yeah, I think that um, really speaks volume in terms of gaining that those other opportunities, right? You're coming away with an additional minor. You've got that brotherhood to look after you. Um, I think that it speaks volumes for uh, what that program can do for, for a student here. Um, Wesley, you're the, the one that's also been in the unit probably the longest here. Do you want to speak to anything that Scott might have missed in terms of uh, the some of the differences? Because you're a non traditionally a non-regimental student, right? So um, what does your day-to-day -day look like? Or what could it, what did it um, look like? Sure. So like, for example, today is just a normal day for us. So I didn't have any Navy events that I had to go to. Um, so during the typical school day, I'm just in civilian clothes, really wearing whatever I want. Um, and then going forward too, there's, again, like Scott said, a lot of fun events that we do. So sometimes we do events that are pretty awesome that are part of an official unit uh, activity. So for example, on our PT session on Friday, on Veterans Day, we're doing a Murph fitness challenge to honor uh, Lieutenant Michael Murphy, who was killed in a Navy SEAL operation. And so we're going to go do that fitness challenge for PT. So only a few midshipmen are actually required to go to that PT session because it's based on your PT scores. But a lot of us are going to show up to that because it's an awesome opportunity to go, go get some and uh, have a good time together. Mm -hmm. Additionally, there's not a whole lot more that goes into your, uh, your average day. I just, I live a normal college student life. And really that's part of why I wanted to choose a school that wasn't a service academy because while this while Maine Maritime has opportunities to be in our regimental program, I don't have to, and that's something that I wanted wanted to do, and I really enjoy it. But additionally, there's no there's no really differences or stigmatism or anything between us and students in the regiment. And ironically, most of my friends are in the regimental program, so it's we're basically just one one big body of students, and we are intending to graduate with you know an awesome job and. How we get there is just a little bit different, but there's really no big, um, big thing separating us at the end of the day. Yeah, no, that's that's um, really powerful in terms of that one big one big school unit, um, and then you've got this additional family to to help support you. And that was actually one of the questions that was pre-submitted was that support um, going. Going into your freshman year, what support systems do you have in place? And by having a whole nother family that's looking after you, whether it's through your grades, through your um, social life, through just having um, that network on campus, that's really important. Julia or Jacob, did you have anything in addition to add to what Wesley and Scott had said um, in terms of your day-to-day -day life? Go for it, Julia. <laughs> um, I was I was just going to uh, mention for the um, SSO kids or the strategic sea lift officer kids, um, we do only three extra classes. So we do a intro to naval science with the rest of the active duty kids. And we do a strategic sea lift officer class specifically for us and learning about what our career is going to look like. And then we join the active duty kids again for a leadership and ethics class and those in our senior year. And those are the only classes that we're required to do per ROTC. But I would like to say that, you know, as a student in the regiment taking a lot of the licensed classes, so many of the foundational values and knowledge transfers over to that ROTC program. So it's kind of like, you know, I know the uniform standards. I practice leadership every day in this capacity. And I think it's a really good opportunity to practice what you need to do in the future. So. Yeah, no, that um, is another great point in terms of that bridge between the regimental program and the, the ROTC program. Um, there is well, there is a question that came through in terms of being a athlete and 
<laughs> participating in NROTC and, and maybe it goes as far as, you know, being that athlete, being an NROTC and can you do other things with your day, right? And Jacob, I'm going to look to you. I know lacrosse hasn't fully started in, in full swing, but I'm sure you guys are already looking at schedules and starting to figure out how you're going to have your day-to-day -day structure. Yeah, so it's definitely tougher uh, being an athlete with an NROTC. Um, you're going to have to be pretty smart with your time. It's definitely doable. Um, normally with Rossi, obviously, PTs in the morning, you have your normal classes and lab during the day. So there's not much, um, there's not many conflicts between athletics and Rossi. The, to be honest, it's, it's just, uh, if you really love the sport, you're going to have to give up some of your, your rest time in the afternoons and evenings or go to sleep a bit later to, and wake up for a PT the next day. But it's doable. You just have to be smart with your time. Um, and lots of midshipmen have done it. And it's definitely doable. It is definitely doable. Um, so you can do it all and you can be an incredible student while doing it all, which is really important. And the other part of that question that had come through was merit-based scholarships. And we cannot award scholarships for athletics here. We are division three sports school. So scholarships are in relation to merit-based or need-based. So how well you've done academically throughout your high school career and um, whether you need additional support to help afford the education. So keep that in mind. Um, we can't award scholarships for athletic performance or being part of one of our sports teams. And it looks like um, we're getting a bunch of questions. And so uh, one of the questions, Jacob, actually, I'm gonna go back, <laughs> back to you on this one, but it's about the difference between um, the Marines and going Navy. And what was it that made you go the Marine route? Um, the this, this student really mentioned that they don't know much about it at all. And what is it, like boil it down, what do they need to know? Um, and is it something that they should, should start exploring further? Yeah, so uh, for me, I always knew I wanted to go Marine side. Obviously, you know, the Marines are part of the Navy. So I had to apply through the NROTC scholarship, but for someone looking to join uh, as a Marine officer, they should start looking now as the scholarship deadlines coming up pretty soon to get your initial fitness tests, your application, your interviews all done. Um, once you get into the unit and you get your scholarship, there are a few differences. So for classes, Marine options only have to take six classes. Um, there's a few different ones that we take and the Navy takes um, the, there are no calculus or physics requirements for the Marine options. You just take your major and your Naval science classes and a few other writing and American history classes, but there's no STEM based requirement in the Marines. The biggest difference though, for summer cruises, which as a scholarship midshipman you do one every summer is after your junior year, it's called your first class cruise. Marine options go through OCS, which is officer candidate school for six weeks. Um, and that's a, it's a pretty big and tough task. And so that's definitely something you should be aware of and keep in mind and train for it even as early as now. Um, but that's probably the biggest difference, but first step would definitely just be to apply for that scholarship now and work through that. Yeah, no, that, thank you for that. Um that breakdown, that's, that's um, quite powerful. Um, so Scott, I had one I was gonna post to you and it has um, skipped my brain, <laughs> but oh, it was, um, it, Jacob had brought it up in terms of your um, Navy cruises. How do you fit that in with your progression of going out and um, gaining that license? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. And um, it can get very hectic, um, I will say. So my freshman year, um, once we completed our freshman academic year for school uh, with the regiment, I was a part of the training crews on the state of Maine. Um, and uh, with how that summer worked, I actually ended up going on my uh, 
ROTC cruise before I went on the summer training cruise because we did cr two cruises that summer. Um, but as a scholarship midshipman uh, in the Navy, your third class cruise, your, the first cruise you go on after your freshman year is called Quarter Mid, which is career orientation and training for midshipmen. Um, there's one on the West Coast in San Diego and one on the East Coast in Norfolk. And what you do at Quarter Mid is so aviation, surface warfare, submarines, and then you even get uh, exposure to the Marines. Um, and that was a really fun experience. I got to do basically everything and anything cool that the Navy does, I got to see or be a part of within a month. Um, so it was jam packed, but at the same time, it was basically summer camp that I was getting paid to go to. Um, and that was a great experience. Um, and like I said, that worked out because of um, the training crews with the school being the later half of the summer. But I know this past year, um, midshipmen in the unit were still able to go on quarter mid after participating on the cruise on the state of Maine. Um, and then this past summer, my uh, I did my commercial shipping experience, which we call cadet shipping. It's like an internship out to sea. Um, so I worked on a drill ship for a month and then I was off a drill ship for a month and then I went back on the drill ship for a month for a total of 60 days working down in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, I got off on August 3rd and then on August 7th I went to Groton, Connecticut and I got on a submarine with the Navy and I was underway on a submarine for 10 days and then I was able to get off the submarine and that was my summer. Um, and that was a little bit more of a challenge to schedule um, with the cadet shipping experience, but, um, the unit was very helpful with, with scheduling. Um, and, uh, I was still able to get out. So you, you can definitely do it. You just need to be proactive about it and, um, just communicate early on and often with, um, what your schedule is, how it's changing and, um, what, what you're able to do for a cruise and what you would like to do for a cruise, because, um, as a midshipman, they joke about it, but it's actually like the most important rank of the Navy because they want to make you as happy as possible and give you the best possible experience. So take advantage of it. Um, you know, try new things, do as much as you can. Um, and if you, if you show the initiative that you want to, you want to get out and go on a cruise, um, the unit and the Navy will make it happen. So what was your coolest experience? Um, my freshman year on Corchamid, I got to crawl down a torpedo tube on a submarine and sign my name. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Awesome. And then I also got to fly. And you got to fly a plane? Yeah. And a lot of others. But those were the top two. Wesley, what was your favorite? So I've got several. Um, for my second class cruise, I got flown out to Hawaii and I got to go aboard a uh, attack submarine and that was a 12 day underway and I'd never been to Hawaii before. So that was pretty awesome. We had some extra time. So I was able to go see the USS Arizona Memorial and that was really moving and it was really cool that I, I had the ability to go see it. But on that submarine, like we did a bunch of really cool stuff. I got to shoot uh, some uh, countermeasures uh, from the submarine help help the torpedo men with that. We did a lot of other really cool stuff, and I got to drive a nuclear submarine. I got to look at the nuclear reactor, and that was pretty freaking cool. And then this past summer for first class crews, I got to fly an H sixty helicopter, and that was also pretty awesome. So, really, you know, like like Scott was saying, plan it out because it's important to know in advance what you want to do and then push for that because you're your own best advocate. But at the same time, you really need to communicate. You cannot just have a plan and then expect it's going to happen. Because like Scott, for my, my senior uh, internship, I had to do for my, my uh, degree before my, my senior year, that internship, I had to factor in with my active duty crews. And that was pretty tight. So again, having that planning ability beforehand is really important. But again, I've gotten paid to fly a helicopter and be on a submarine, mm -hmm. which that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I noticed one question, and I believe, Julia, you had answered it, um, typing it in, but I wanted to address, what are the differences in all your uniforms? Why, um, 
speak, can you speak to that? Julie, I'm going to put you on the spot because I think you okay. threw the answer um, first and then we'll go from there. Um, so I am wearing the khakis. I am a member of the Strategies, the SSO program. Um, so this is what we regularly wear. This is also what we wear in the regiment. We just have different pins uh, or collar devices and insignias. Um, but what you can see the other panelists wearing are the Navy working uniform, and that's the camo uniform. We will wear those after we commission when we're on active duty order. So those two weeks that we are active, we will be wearing those. Um, we do have the other uniforms that you would wear, like your uh, service dress blues. Um, we will commission in your dress whites. Um, it's just we regularly wear these. These are more of a like everyday, um, I don't know, more professional out. I, I don't want to say more professional, but um, this is just what we wear. Um, but I think the active duty students also have access to sewn in khakis. Scott, you're shaking your head. <laughs> yep. So sometimes um, as active duty midshipmen, we will also wear khakis. That just depends on what um, the staff and the midshipmen leadership decide uh, for the uniform of the day. And then um, you can see Jacob's uh, camos are a little bit of a different color. That's because they're the Marine camos called the Marpats. Um, but yeah, basically the same thing. So they wear, they wear that shade of camo and maybe wears the shade. Yeah, no, um, anything else you that I missed in terms of the uniform? No? <laughs> I mean, we, we have a lot of uniforms. So for the active duty side, I've got uh, PT gear, which is just a shirt and shorts. We've got this, the Navy working uniform. I've got dress blues. I've got dress whites. I've got khakis. I've got a lot of uniforms. And so it's, it's a lot, you know, to keep track of because if you're wearing it, you need to be wearing it right. And there are certain things that you need to do, but again, that really teaches you attention to detail. And a lot of the more intense aspects of the military, they're not to yell at you, to demean you, but rather they're to prepare you for, hey, your ship just got hit by a torpedo. You need to then respond to that in an orderly manner and fight the ship, but then also fight the enemy. And so it's all the you know simulated stress is really important. And that's part of what the uniforms are, is teaching you to have attention to detail and knowing that, hey, like my pin should be this far from the edge of the collar or even something silly like that, it teaches you really the ability to pay attention to what you're doing. And again, it gives you kind of a planning mindset that a lot of other people might not necessarily be exposed to. And they look cool, that helps too. Right, and so Tuesday's um, active duty students wear those um, uniforms to class and around campus for the day. Uh, so, we have a, only about 15 minutes left, and I wanted to kind of dive into speaking towards our prospective students that are looking down the pipeline of what can they do now to prepare um, beyond just the application, right? There's, there's going through the application and getting the interviews and, and moving down that process, but there's also what can they do physically in terms of getting through that physical fitness test? What can they do in their class preparation in high school to be most... Uh, prepared for success when they come or for that application or for potentially receiving that scholarship. And so what classes should they be taking, especially if they're a junior, um, looking at, into their senior year, or if they're a current senior, is there anything that they can start doing now um, that will pre best prepare them? So Jacob, I'm going to put you on the spot because you just went through this process. <laughs> yeah. So for class wise, I mean, it's just do your best, get your grades as high as they can. Uh, take challenging classes. They they do look at what your classes are like. Um, I can't speak much on the Navy side for what the breakdown is at, but they do look at how good you're doing academically, what your SAT scores are. Uh, physically, I mean, just get in the weight room, start lifting, run a lot. Um, for people who do pick up scholarship, one of the the summer crews that I went through this past summer is called NSI, which is New Student Indoctrination, which is out in Chicago, and it's kind of a indoctrination to the ROTC. And you know, you have uh, drill instructors from the Marine Corps, so you're be PTing a lot. Um, so I'll just get in the best shape you can. It'll look better for the scholarship with your physical tests, and it'll help prepare you for the unit. 
Is there a baseline um, for physical fitness tests that you must be over in order to qualify? Yeah, so there are different uh, scores. So for the Marine side, the three events are plank, pull-ups, and a three-mile run. For the Navy, it's push-ups, plank, and a mile and a half run. So there are different standards that you have to hit um, based on your age and gender. Um, so you can look those up online and kind of base your planning off of that. But in the end, it's just, you know, discipline and commitment to working hard for that. One note on that that I'd like to point out is that all of us in ROTC, we do the 20 to 24 year old standard. So for example, I was 19 when I, uh, when I went to NSI and then when I came to Maine Maritime, but we've still scored in the 20 to 24 age range. So regardless of, um, you know, how old you are, uh, unless you're a private service member, uh, you're going to be in that uh, 20 to 24 range. So if you're 17, like you've got a big advantage on everybody else that's a lot older than you and can't run as fast. So that's awesome. Another thing I want to point out is I have gotten really big into physical fitness and I was barely passing the fitness test when I came to Maine Maritime and fitness was not a priority. I didn't care about what I ate and I didn't really care about, you know, what I looked and how much weight I could lift, but I've really gotten in the gym now. And that, that's what I did over my, my summer of COVID. And that was a really big uh, help to just my performances in the gym and because like when you're, you know, if it's hard to do a lot of push-ups, just go out and do push-ups. If it's hard to do a plank, just sit there and plank for a long time, maybe throw some weight on your back. And obviously the run, the worst part, you just got to go run. And that's a really important, important aspect of, you know, making you a better candidate to apply, but also just keeping you as a healthier human being, as a great leader. Because if I'm terrible at PT and yet I'm expecting my sailors and Marines to go out and do really well in PT, I need to be maintaining a standard. And so, again, it's all going back to, you know, we are upholding a standard and it's a privilege that we get to wear this uniform and for some of us to get the scholarship or to get uh, different stipends from the Navy. Yeah, Scott, did you have anything to add um, about being that active duty side of things and that preparedness? Um, yeah, so the, the biggest thing coming in, you want to make sure you're in really good shape because um. When you show up in the unit, we will take an inventory PRT, which does not count officially on your uh, record as a midshipman. However, uh, you do need to pass it in order to activate your scholarship if you're coming in on a scholarship. Um, so that's one really big thing. You just want to come in and, and knock that first IPRT out. It, it really puts you in a good standing with the unit and um, it makes it a lot easier because then your college is getting paid for right off the bat and uh, it's not hanging over your head makes it a lot easier to just focus on everything you need to focus on. Yeah, in terms of, um, Scott, did you have, take any additional classes or special classes in high school that set you up for success here? Um, yes, so I took a, a few AP courses during my time in high school. Um, the biggest one that I would say helped me a lot was um, AP calculus. I had a tremendous calculus teacher in high school. Um, you know, I was very fortunate to have her. Um, and I did, I did well on the AP exam my senior year. So I was able to get um, calculus one to transfer in as a transfer credit. Um, so as I was saying earlier, everyone in the unit has to take calculus one and calculus two, um, but as well as physics one and physics two. So if you're able to take um, an AP calculus or physics course in high school and uh, you take the exam and you pass the exam, um, and you get credit for it at Maine Maritime, then you will get credit for it in the ROTC unit. And that's one less course you have to take um, to, to be able to commission. Yeah, that's uh, really important that you brought that up in terms of that AP. Definitely, if you are in AP classes, take those AP exams, don't miss them. That is one way that we are able to award potentially transfer credit, it depends on how you do on those AP exams, but you can definitely get in touch with myself um, through the admissions process and we'll work with you. But um, other dual enrollment classes, or if you can take a community college class, go for it, please. Um, those really help because if they can, we can use that as transfer credit for one of your classes here in your major, it could potentially be used for one of the required classes for um, NROTC. Julie, I'm going to swing back to that past question that we were talking about a little bit in terms of preparedness. If they're thinking about going in that reserve side of things, is there anything that um, you would give as advice for these students watching? 
Yeah, um, so one of the things that I think everybody should start thinking about and start preparing for is that so much of the challenge with the regiment of midshipmen or the ROTC program here is mental. And I think that the biggest thing you can do for yourself is prepare your uh, mental toughness, right? So many of the things we do every day, you might be like, wow, it's really useless to put on that shirt or to shine your shoes or make your bed a certain way, waking up early, right? Nobody really wants to do those things, but it's, it's a lot of pressure on you in your first year to manage your time correctly, to make certain expectations. And if you, if you test yourself every day and make it into a game and complete those requirements, it, it's going to prepare you, right? Some of the best advice I was ever given was, you know, if you stretch every day and then you fall, you're going to be in a lot better shape, you know, if then if you just fall and have never stretched in your life, right? So that's those emergency situations that we're talking about, that uh, readiness for if the Navy needs us, right? So that's that's one of the best things I can give you, right? Manage your time, um, meet those expectations. You know, PT isn't required by the regiment, but it's, it's really good for you. It really gets you in a great mindset. It helps you connect with that community. ROTC requires you to meet a good low standard. So even if you're looking up online and you're saying, oh, those satisfactory, I'm passing, whatever, it's, it's not that good low standard. So you really need to raise, raise your expectations, test yourself mentally, uh, physically, you know, make sure that you're prepared and don't, don't miss out on your dream career or a really good opportunity because you didn't push yourself. So that's the advice I would give. And, and Julia, do you have the same uh, PT standards as everyone else being in the SSO, being in the strategic CLIP mission and program? Excuse me. Uh, yes, you do. So uh, to commission as an officer in the Navy, um, obviously the same, uh, the standards are different for Marine Corps, but um, to commission as an officer in a Navy, you need to meet that good low standard, right? So um, I am tested with, I mean, I'm a female, so I'm tested at the same uh, standard that the female scholarship students are. And we participate in the same morning PT. I get to wake up and see Wesley's smiling face every day <laughs> at 4.30. <laughs> at 4.30. Yep, it's early, <laughs> but the sun comes up early now. Um, well, we are kind of rounding out the, our time here, but I just wanted to throw one last thing. I've changed my name here to my email. So if those of you that are watching, if you have any questions in terms of this process, reach out to me. We can get you connected with somebody in the unit um, and you can continue to have those conversations as to whether this is the right path for you or if it is the right path and you know it is the right path, how do we make that path possible? And so as um, those of you that are looking down this pipeline, you're gonna have two streams. You're gonna apply to Maine Maritime Academy as a traditional applicant. So completing that application for admission, submitting those documents, and then you're gonna apply to the Navy side. And in the, in the background, um, what you don't see is, is the bridging of those applications. And so you do have to get both streams in place. So yes, it does take a little extra time um, on your part, but uh, it's worth it in the end. And I think you would have a resounding um, stage here, shaking their hands in terms of that being worth it. So whether that scholarship is coming through or you're going in through that college option, there is that pathway forward. And so if any of Scott, Jacob, Wesley, or Julia, if you guys have any last words um, to share, to, to give these guys as wisdom before we say goodnight, um, please do. Yeah, I'm gonna jump on in and say that you know, through this process, it's very challenging. And like Julia was talking about, you're going to challenge yourself mentally, you're going to challenge yourself physically. And you're going to be faced with experiences that are they're kind of scary. Like I've done an auto rotation in a helicopter. And if you don't know what that is, you're basically falling really, really fast, uh, like 500 feet. And that was pretty frightening, but it was also one of the coolest things I've ever done. And going on a submarine uh, deep into the water, that was also a little frightening. And finally, I'm about to go commission and go to my ship and go do some training before I do that. And I'm, you know, I'll be honest with you. I'm nervous about that. It's not something that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to be super easy, but it also motivates me to challenge myself and to go get after it. And 
it's honestly, you, you get comfortable with having this kind of adrenaline and, and a little bit of nervousness about what you're doing because it's a challenge and it's definitely going to help you go great places and do a lot of great things and hopefully see the world too. Yeah, that constant adrenaline, that's a good way of putting it. Scott, as uh, another older member of the, the group here, any last parting words of wisdom? Uh, yeah, so the um, what I would say is you're going to be nervous and you're not going to know what to expect. Um, and it's, it's going to be overwhelming, but just, um, coming into it, make sure you control what you can control. Um, like, like we've been saying, uh, go to the gym, run, lift some weights, you know, uh, you get into good physical shape, make sure you're finishing out your, your senior year strong for those of you that are going to be graduating this coming spring. Um, you know, make sure you're, you're getting every last bit of high school out, um, that you can make sure you're learning as much as possible. Um, and then enjoy yourself in the summer, but, but come ready to work and come ready to learn. Um, it, it's very intimidating. Um, I, I still remember showing up to the unit and being scared like all day, every day, just, yeah, I couldn't sleep before PT the first couple of times because I just couldn't even imagine how many pushups we were going to do or whatever it was. But you, you know, if you come in and, and, and you, and you come in trying to attack it instead of shying away from it, uh, it makes it a lot easier. And just know that as you, as you progress in your time through the unit, it only gets better. Um, you, you get a lot more out of it uh, as you continue to progress and uh, you become a leader. Uh, you get a lot of rewards out of it and it's a, a really fun experience. But if you shy away from it, then you're, you're not going to get very much out of it. You've, you've got to welcome it with open arms, even though it can be big and scary sometimes. Yeah, that's, those are great party words. Julia, can you beat that? That's a hard one. <laughs> no. Jacob, um, the, the freshest um, eyes to the unit, any parting words for um, kind of a, a series of generation of students that is closest in age to you right now? Yeah, I mean, work hard, finish your school years off strong or uh, in your scholarships. Uh, just enjoy being uncomfortable in <laughs> academics, but also physically. If you push yourself every day, you're going to you're going to succeed. And, you know, that's what the unit expects you to do to exceed that standard as an officer one day and just enjoy it enjoy it well what we're going to do is say good night to everyone um if there is any additional questions that you guys as watching think of please be in touch with me we will get you in touch with somebody in the unit so that you can get the answers question uh sorry questions answered um by those that are living and breathing it and we appreciate everyone's attention this whole hour and thank you again for watching and have a good night good night